Hey everyone, Rafael Delio here, and today we're getting to the last episode of Array Delimiting with Redis and Java series. In the other episodes of this series, we covered other type of array delimiter implementations. We went over the token bucket, the fixed window counter, and the slider window log. All of these videos can be found in the description of the one you're watching right now. However, if you've ever needed to control how many requests hit your system without breaking the bank or memory usage, this is the one for you. We'll be covering the sliding window counter approach. We'll go over how it works, why it's better than other methods, and of course, how to implement it in Java with Redis. So let's jump right in. Before we get into the nitty gritty, quick refresher. Rate limiting is how we control how many requests a client can make over a certain time. Imagine a website allowing only 100 requests per minute per user. Anything beyond that, blocked. There are different ways to do this. We covered in this channel the fixed window counter, that's super simple and easy to implement. We covered the token bucket, which allows bursts of requests to be made. And we even saw how to implement the sliding window log, the one that gives us the ultimate precision. Today, we'll be implementing together the sliding window counter, which is still quite precise, but doesn't consume as much memory as the sliding window log. Instead of tracking every single request like the sliding window log does, we break time into smaller intervals, say one second chunks inside a one minute window. Each of these intervals acts like a bucket where we count the number of requests. A request comes in and we increment the counter for the current interval. To check if the client's within the allowed limit, we sum up all active intervals in the rolling window. And if the total count exceeds the limit, the request is blocked. Old intervals naturally expire as time moves forward, meaning we only track relevant data. This keeps memory usage low and rate limits smooth without sudden resets. All right, let's see how Redis helps us make this happen. Instead of storing every single request timestamp, we're going to group requests into small time intervals and just keep a count for each one. That way, we get a nice balance of accuracy and efficiency. We'll store these counts in a Redis hash where the hash itself will represent the window, while its fields will represent the subwindows. Each subwindow will be a counter to determine how many requests have been made during that period. We will use three main Redis commands to make it work. hincurby, which increases the request count for the current subwindow interval, hexpire, which sets an expiration on subwindows, and hgetall, which fetches all active intervals so we can check the total count. Had you seen the hexpire command before? This is actually a new Redis command that allows us to set a time to leave, expiration in other words, to the fields of a hash, allowing them to expire independently from each other. By leveraging this command, we don't need to worry about removing old entries manually from our hash. Pretty straightforward, right? Now let's translate this into Java. First, let's create a sliding window counter rate limiter class. Open our Java editor and let's start typing. To find the class, we need three fields. The first one is Jadis, the library we'll be using to communicating with Redis. The second is the time of requests allowed during a time window. The third is the size of the time window. And the last one is the size of the subwindows. Let's set a constructor to initialize all these values. All right, now let's set the method that checks if our request is allowed. This method receives a client ID, use it for identifying different clients independently. We then start by defining the key space in which this key will be stored in Redis, allowing us to keep our data organized within the database. Now let's verify the number of requests that this client has received and that are still valid. We'll do it by using the hgetall command. This command will receive the key of our hash and return all the fields and their respective values. The values are the actual counter of the subwindows. We will sum them to get the total count. Then, we'll compare the total count to the limit and decide whether this request is allowed to proceed. If it is, we calculate what's the actual current subwindow in which the request falls into, and that will be used to separate the counters within our hash. Here, we'll start a transaction to ensure that our operation is going to be atomic and that all of our commands are going to be sent at once to the database. This will allow us to achieve even a better performance by avoiding unnecessary network trips. Then, we'll call the hinkerby function to increment the current counter, the current subwindow we calculated before. The key is the key to the hash. The current subwindow is the field key within this hash, and one is the value by which this field will be incremented by. If the actual hash doesn't exist yet, don't worry, Redis will create it for us. After that, we'll set an expiration for this field using the new Redis H expire command. This function receives the key to the hash the expiration time, which is our sub-window size, the expiration option, and the fields which we want the expiration to be set for. 
The NX expiration option is important because it tells Redis to only set the expiration to our field if it hadn't been set before. If we don't do this, we will reset the expiration every time a new request comes in and end up extending the subwindow for longer than it should exist. After we run the transaction, Redis will return the response of all commands we sent. To make sure our operation succeeded, we need to make sure the response isn't empty. And finally, we return if the request is able to proceed. Boom, a rate limiter is ready. Let's write some tests to make sure rate limiter is working as expected. To write our tests, we use Redis test container, JUnit5, and a search J. In our slider window counter rate limiter test, we'll define a Redis container, a Jetis instance, and a rate limiter. Before our tests, we'll make sure a Redis container is running and that its port is exposed. Before each test, we'll make sure our Jetis is connected and that our database is clean. To do so, we'll call the flush all command. And after each test, we'll tell Jetis to close the connection with our database. Let's start with a simple case. When a client makes requests within the allowed limit, they should all be allowed. So first, we create an instance of a rate limiter with a limit of five requests, a 10 second slider window, and one second sub windows. Then we simulate a client sending five requests. If everything is working, each call should return true. If this test passes, it means our rate limiter is correctly allowing requests within the limit. Let's run it. Nice, it's working. All right, now let's get a bit more aggressive. What happens when a client goes over the limit? We need to make sure our limiter correctly blocks their access requests. We configure the limiter again, but this time after five successful requests, we send a sixth one. The last request should be denied. If the test fails, it means our rate limiter is letting through too many requests and we've got a bug to fix. But if it passes, great, our limiter is correctly enforcing limits. Let's run it. Nice, working again. Now let's test if the limiter correctly allows requests gradually as older subwindows expire. Here's what we'll do. We configure the rate limiter with a limit of three requests, a four second window, and one second subwindows. We send three requests spaced one second apart. They should all be allowed. The fourth request should be denied because we've hit the limit. After waiting for two seconds, two older requests should have expired, meaning we can send one more request. This test is crucial because it ensures that the sliding window behaves dynamically. It doesn't just reset at fixed intervals, but instead gradually allows new requests as older subwindows disappear. If it fails, something is off with our window expiration logic. If it passes, our limiter is behaving exactly like a true sliding window should. It's working, perfect. With these three tests, we've covered the core functionality. Requests within the limit should be allowed, access requests should be blocked, and requests should be allowed again as the window progresses. If you want to see more tests, check the GitHub repository in the description of this video. That's it, we built a sliding window counter rate limiter with Redis and Java, no messy timestamp logs, lower memory usage, and smooth rate limiting without hard resets. And all of that by implementing it beautifully with Redis 8 and its new hexpire command. With this video, we come to the end of our rate limiter series. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to like this video and comment down below. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.